What is up guys, it's Headsets Modern Warfare here, GamerTab Banjo Chicken, and welcome back to another PC tutorial. So, in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be showing you guys something quite uh, simple that I am surprised a lot of people don't know that you can actually do this. I mean, this has been around forever, and I've known about this since 2008, 2009, but people still don't know about this, which is really surprising. And it's something really simple, it is just how to connect your Xbox to Xbox Live through your computer. So rather than uh, connecting the console directly to your router or router using uh, Ethernet cable or wireless, you actually wire your console to your computer and then you use your computer's internet connection to provide the connection to Xbox Live to the console. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys who are watching is like, really? like. I've known about this for ages as well, but then some of you may not even know that you can do this. Um, so basically at the end of the video I'll go through and explain all the advantages of doing this for modding, uh, for a modder's perspective, because there are loads of advantages to doing this if you are a Xbox modder, um, but I'm sure some of the people who are watching this video may just want to know how to do this for their retail, so um, that's why I'll explain all that at the end, why it's a good thing for modders. But for just in general use, if you have your router or router in another room and you have a fat Xbox 360 console that doesn't have built-in wireless, then this is definitely a good way to go about it. If you have a computer or a laptop in your room, you can, you know, connect your console to that and use that the laptop for a computer's internet connection to connect to Xbox Live. So. First thing you're going to need, I'll put a diagram up on screen so you can see how this works. Really basic, you need your Xbox wired to a computer. So you need an Ethernet cable, plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the Xbox, plug the other end of the Ethernet cable into your computer. Um, and what you want is a computer that has some kind of wireless connection. So wireless adapter, wireless USB adapter, wireless card, built-in wireless like a laptop. Uh, something that has wireless connection to the internet on your computer and what we're going to be doing is just when you have that set up uh, it's quite basic on the computer you just have to do one thing one kind of small thing on the computer to get this to work so basically first thing there's actually two ways of doing this so you click on start you go to computer once you have your Xbox I'd switch the switch your Xbox on once you have it hooked up uh, so click on start computer, scroll down to network down here and then click on the network and sharing center up in the top left and then change adapter settings. So ignore all these other ones here for now, okay? The only ones we're interested in are local area connection and our wireless network connection. So the wireless network connection is obviously the wireless card or built-in wireless that we have on our computer. Uh, that connects to the internet. So that's our adapter there that's providing us with the internet access. And then the local area connection should be stuck saying identifying and that is our ethernet port in our computer. So the console is connected to that port. So essentially our local area connection is our Xbox. You can even rename it to make it uh, a little bit easier, you can just rename it to like Xbox or something like that so you know that that is your Xbox 360. So what you want to do, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either highlight both of them or you know hold down control, select one, click on the other to select them both and then right click. You may also get that unidentified network, that's normal too. So you just highlight them both, you right click and you click on bridge connections. Now this is one way of doing it. It creates a third little adapter here called the network bridge. It will disconnect you from the internet for the time being and then it will try and reconnect. So we can see it's trying to reconnect to the internet here. And there we go, so it's connected. So these two are now bridged together. So this is now the adapter that's providing us with the internet. So it comes through here and it gets provided to both of these adapters. So that way our Xbox will be able to connect uh, to the internet through our computer. So that is one way of doing it um, and it works well for me. Um, you may have to restart the console for it to connect, in fact you probably will, so restart the Xbox, do a, do a test connection if it doesn't connect first time. 
The problem with this method for me, and it could just be for me, is that I ne whenever I switch the console on, it never connects first time. I always have to test uh, my connection on the console for it to connect. So this is not my preferred method, but it may work better for you. That it's the other method that you can do, if we just delete this network bridge, So we deleted it now, um, I'm going to have to wait for it to re-establish the connection. So identifying. Okay, so now that we've removed the network bridge, the other way, and this is the way that works best for me, um, you just try both of them, find out which one works best for you. So the other way is right click on the adapter that's providing you with the internet, which is the wireless network connection. You select properties and you click on sharing and you're going to click allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection click that and then select the xbox or local area connection if you've not renamed it to xbox and click ok and then it should come up saying shared next to it and that just means it's sharing the connection with the xbox so that's the other way of doing it now what a lot of people say is what happens if I don't have this drop down menu sometimes you click on sharing and there's no drop down menu the only reason you will not have a drop down menu is if that's the only other adapter there is if these are the only two adapters you have then it will not give you a drop down box which is fine you just click the button to allow other network users to connect to this computer's internet connection and click OK and then it's fine so it just means that that's the only other adapter there is, so it will automatically share it with that adapter, which is why it doesn't give you the drop-down box. If you have other adapters on and enabled, then it will give you a drop-down box, so you select the Xbox. And that's it. So all you have to do is restart the console, and it should connect to the internet. Test Xbox Live connection, it should say it's on wired connection. Test Xbox Live connection. You know, there's always problems that people get first time of doing this. For me, it works flawlessly like this. If I do a network bridge, I always have to test connection, but it still works. Um, the other way of doing it, uh, if you have any more problems, is just restarting the router or router, um, you know, restarting the Xbox, disabling and re-enabling the adapters till you can get it to work. Um, but that's, you know, only for people who have problems. Hopefully, the majority of you, it should just work like this first time, and that's it. Um, so if we right click Xbox, we go to properties and double click on IPv4, you should see that it has an IP address in here and a subnet mask. If it doesn't, then that could be a problem. So, you know, just make sure it's on, uh, just make sure you disable, re-enable it. Okay, so what are the advantages of actually doing this? Well, if you are just doing this on a retail console, then the only really advantage of doing this is you can connect a fat Xbox to your uh, to, to Xbox Live without having to get one of those wireless adapters for the fat Xboxes which are terrible and you're much better off connecting through your computer's wireless because that will be 10 times better anyway. So if you're a modder there are a bunch of advantages to doing this. Number one is you can monitor the network traffic that comes through because all your network traffic that is coming through to your Xbox is now filtering through the PC first before it comes to the Xbox, which means you can run any kind of network protocol analyzer, you know, any kind of network traffic uh, monitor, monitoring software, so you can monitor the network traffic that comes through. So you can find IP addresses of people who are in the games, ports, all that kind of stuff. Um, rather than using APR poisoning, which you would have to do if you weren't connected that way, uh, which, you know, kind of screws up your connection. You don't have to do that if you're connected this way because you can just monitor the traffic that goes through because it's all going through the computer anyway. So that is one advantage. Other advantage, you can spoof your MAC address by using any kind of MAC address changer. Um, you can spoof the MAC address on here because that is the Ethernet port that the network traffic is going through. So you can spoof your MAC address on here using the computer and you have a spoofed MAC address. You can also use VPN software to mask your IP address. If you get DDoSed a lot when you're playing online, then you can basically, if you have a VPN, you just have a VPN adapter like this 
and you just share the VPN with the Xbox instead of the wireless network connection and then that way all your traffic is going through a VPN so if anybody tries to get your IP on the Xbox and DDoS it they will be hitting the VPN's IP rather than yours so you can kind of you know mask your IP address on your Xbox that way so yeah quite a few different advantages to um, to having your network set up in this way another big thing is RTE tools and it's kind of the reason I started making this video in the first place was because with our RTE tool, Apparition Net, loads of people come to us saying like they get problems with it not responding or uh, they get .NET framework errors when they try and activate a mod. That's usually a response time error when you're on wireless connection, meaning it's taking too long for the information to get sent from the computer to the console and a response to get back from the console to the, X to the computer through a uh, wireless connection. So if you are connected this way, uh, the way we have it set up now, then when you're using an RTE tool, when you send a mod to the console, when you activate a mod, it's getting sent straight from the computer down an Ethernet cable directly to the console, and then the response back the other way, straight Ethernet to one another. So it's the best possible connection that you can get for RTE tools so that you minimize the chances of response time errors and neighborhood, Xbox 360 neighborhood will run faster, a lot faster than it would using wireless or even wired to the router. It will probably be faster be being direct from computer to console and console to computer. So there are many reasons if you're a modder um, that, and there's many reasons why you should have your networks or, or your Xbox set up this way. Um, but if not, then if you're not a modder, then it's still a, a good way of connecting your fat Xbox 360 console to the internet. I mean, I have an Xbox 360 Slim as my JTAG, but I never use the built-in wireless. I always connect through my computer so I can get faster neighborhood speeds, faster RTE connection speeds, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is how you do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's something quite basic in, compared to kind of the other videos I do on my channel, but anyway, if you want more PC tutorials from me, be sure to leave some requests. Just let me know what you'd like to see next. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions. So I'll see you guys next time.